and our next guest survived the attack at that Supernova Music Festival. And he is here in the U.S. now visiting college campuses, including Columbia, where Stephanie was, as well as NYU and soon Yale, talking to students about that horrific day. Jonathan, thank you so much for coming in to share with us what you've experienced. What is your story that you're sharing with these students? What happened to you on October 7th? Well, quite a few things happened on October 7th. Um, on a personal level, um, well, there were terrorists basically invading Israel territories and just slaughtering innocent people, like in a duck range. And um, I would say that two of my friends got killed, they got murdered, three got kidnapped. I luckily, um, I was in the right place in the right time and I managed to to get away from the from the hazard, from the whole area. And the reason why I'm here is just speaking on behalf of the people who don't have that that fortune, you know? Either they're they're dead or their families are they're mourning on, on their kids. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I'm here. So this thing is very personal for me. Whether it's, we were uh, seeing some of the, the images you shared with us. It, what do you want people to see in those images? You know, it's very simple. I'm just trying to just show the truth, just show the facts. You know, I'm, I would say that I'm just, I'm just a simple guy from Israel who survived this terror attack, and I'm just here to show what really happened, because people are very misinformed nowadays, unfortunately, with social media. And like I said, and I've mentioned it in many, many places, campuses, that, you know, lies and hatred and propaganda are spread much faster than truth and real base facts. So that's, so that's why I'm here, all right? I've done these videos, this footage, while I'm in this whole incident because I understood that I have nothing to lose. So I might as well document this whole thing. And, um, and now I'm on a mission. You told me in the break that uh, you think it's really given you a sense of purpose. You said you're on a mission, but you see what we're having in terms of the reaction around the world and what's happening on college campuses here, the, the, the protests, but now threats. I mean, there was even a, a U.S. senator who was recently threatened and arrest made in that case. How do you wrap your head around, as somebody who experiences on such a deep level, the loss, the fear on October 7th, how do you wrap your head around what's happening and others' reactions now in this way to what they're seeing in Gaza and Israel? Well, like I told you, I mean, I have this sense of like motivation to, to really just fight for anti, like towards anti-Semitism and just give this sense of confidence, whether it's the students or the people I talk to or different channels worldwide. So, the matter is that if I survived it and people went through much more hell than I did, all right, I mean, anyone can be strong enough to deal with all this anti-Semitism and hate. The worst thing we can do is be silent about it. Being silent is, is more dangerous than not being silent. Again, you got to really choose your battles. We're dealing with monsters. I wouldn't say animals. That's an insult for the animals, but they're monsters. This hatred this anti-Semitism, in my opinion, again, this is my opinion, it just starts with the Jews, but it'll just spread like cancer to the whole Western world. And this is just starting, and Israel's right now fighting that war for Europe, for the Western world, and we just have to be very strong about it, speak up, we cannot be silent about it. But my job is not to talk politics. I'm just here to, to fight for the truth, show the facts. I'm basically the evidence for all this terror. I've survived it. I've seen an injured girl dying in front of my eyes. Until now, we don't know who she is. Her name was Jenny. Mm -hmm. She's probably kidnapped. She lost a lot of blood. Bullets were flying on top of my head. So, like I said, I'm lucky enough to be here. But there are people that are less lucky than, than I am, and, and I'm here to speak on their behalf. There's a real sense of fear right now, I think, permeating, especially the Jewish community. Can you describe that for us? Why do you think we're in this moment right now. Why do you feel like there is more hatred that is 
has been sparked? I think, uh, you know, and if you, if you look at history, you can see that there are different points in history where um, there are certain incidents that just kind of like, that, that basically the fire starts spreading just because it's like really specific incidents, all right? So what happened on October 7th, this terror attack on us, just kind of like opened Pandora. And there's many reasons to it, you know, why there's anti-Semitism, you know, have, people have this really big hate in them, which is a really different other topic. And I won't really, I I'm not sure if it's a good idea just to get into it, why it's really happening. But it's hate, and no one can justify killing and murdering kids and burning kids alive, putting babies in the oven. This is a modern Holocaust, a second Holocaust. Doesn't matter if it's Jewish or not Jewish, it's in humanity. This is insane. And this can't happen. I mean, we're in 2023. How can we let this happen? We have to really put a stop to it. And we have to do it aggressively. We can't be quiet about it. So that's why I'm here. You know, I'm doing the best I can. And, uh, you know, like I told you before, what really drives me is, is speaking on behalf of these people. You know, I'm just here to, I'm just here on a mission. God was kind of, I guess, was protecting me because he told me, Jonathan, I mean, you know, I kept you alive, but you just, you better do your job. <laughs> and, uh, and, that, and that's why I'm here. And um, it's, not, it's not simple. It's not easy. Yeah. But we're born to, to be resilient and we'll pass this. The worst thing is to put our head down. And I'm not going to put my head down. You are a survivor in every sense of the word and, and truly courageous to be here. Do you feel safe right now? Here in the U.S. or personally in Israel? Both. I do. I feel very safe. Um, again, if, if, if I survived a terror attack, a massacre, I mean, it's kind of, kind of, it's kind of, I got to look at things in proportions. I mean, this is, if I survived that, I mean, I'm, I'm here. I'll be fine. You know, God is with me. I'm a big believer. I believe everything's going to be fine. But again, you got to be careful. And also to, towards, if I have a message I can say to the Jews or please, whoever is, please. feels in danger, just um, be careful. And don't be afraid. Do choose your battles. You know, you can't be wanting to seek justice everywhere you go. You know, if you're fighting against 10 radicals and you're just one person in danger, you know, in these kind of times, maybe it is worth just put your head down. But always just be united, together, strong, and just stop this hate, wherever it is, Jews or not Jews. Like I said, it starts with the Jews, whatever it is, and just spreads out to the whole Western world. Now Israel is fighting this war, and the more we get into Gaza, and we want to get our kidnapped hostages. people, the hostages. We want to get them back. There are more than 200 and, 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 and 20 hostages, if, if I'm not the wrong. The latest number today is 240. We cannot, we cannot stop right now. Until we don't get these hostages back on a personal level, we can't even talk about any ceasefire or, or such thing that I'm hearing. This is nonsense. Again, I'm not going to get into that, but we have to stop this terror, and we got to do it now. And... If you don't stop it, it's going to come to us, and more people are going to get killed. And we have a long way ahead of us, and I really believe it's just a start, whether it's a hatred, now it's a wave of, of hate and, and terror and radicalism. It's going to become a tsunami sooner or later if we don't stop it right now. Jonathan, thank you so much for coming in here and speaking your heart. Really appreciate you sharing with us. Thank you. Thank you.